Yeah. Okay, that was that was Tashala. You know, you guys weren't really supposed to weren't really supposed to supposed to hear her. Ugandan rapper, and <clears throat> it's just very very cool and amazing to me that you can get this music from all over the world and connect and connect with people in that way. So I let's go back to the U.S. for a minute and like all the drama and stuff that was going on here because okay because you know how it all started with Ilhan Omar right mm -hmm. okay um so she was making tweets that people that people didn't like and what I think is crazy about that is that um, remember the governor of Virginia and the blackface scandal and all that? Yeah. And Jesse Smollett? Okay, that's all. Everybody's forgotten yeah, about all that. that. Yeah. 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 But, okay. With Jesse, it's separate. But to me, the connection is just the politics of being offended. And yeah. I don't think being offended should deter I mean determine that much and you know it seems to me that you know I mean my belief with the governor of Virginia was that the people of Virginia should decide how they felt about it and should decide if they wanted him to be their governor or not and if you know they were it should have been the, it should have been their decisions not the not the rest not the rest of the country and um so, anyway, I think it kind of seems that's what's happening because people are busy with, are busy with other stuff. Um, but this Elon Omar stuff, I mean, you know, since, I, since I'm of Jewish descent, I feel like, you know, I mean, I can say whatever the fuck I want about it. So, um, okay. Um, like a great example to me is... Okay, people were offended by her tweets and then somebody was trying to make an explanation and said, "Well, like, look, she was raised she was raised in a re in a refugee camp. She has like real close personal experience and that is different than having than being the grandchild of of Holocaust survivors." And he got a shitstorm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God! How could you say? How could you say that? Blah blah blah. I'm so offended. Now, whoever that guy is, now people want him to apologize. And I just feel like stop. Okay, like it's not being offended is part of life, and. You know, you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't be able to police people to that level about being offended. And I think that that is, I, I think that it is, a, that, that particular thing is like an absolute massive drama queen thing. Like, okay, how can you possibly compare, okay, if something happened to me, like, okay, I had a traumatic, um, accident to accident two years ago that was like traumatic traumatic for me if somebody comes and like tells me that their grandparents having that accident is worse 
I'll be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I might not be. So, I mean, come on. She has a unique personal experience. And um, I agree with the... you. People need to be able, you need to be able to criticize the state of Israel without being accused of anti-Semitism. You just do. And I am certainly, I'm concerned about rising rates of anti-Semitism in the world, but I am more concerned with the anger and bitterness and alienation that is being perpetuated by the politics of being offended and that um, if you don't like what um, Brenda, if you don't like what someone is saying um, sometimes you just kind of need to deal with that and so that's just messed up and you know, okay, we're talking about um, Brenda, like how, you know, being able to criticize the state of Israel. It is legitimate to criticize the state of Israel, okay? My grandparents were hugely attached to the state to the state of is uh, to the state of, is of Israel. They donated tons of money, they owned property in Israel. They went to Israel all the time. And my grandfather, he actually believed that he was not in that he didn't he didn't like associations that went around monitoring anti anti-Semitism. He felt that people should be able to be anti-Semitic if they wanted to. That that is a, that, that like okay, that was your opinion. Like, okay, we can do our thing. We don't need to go around one of my interests is nationalism okay like we talk about the prime minister of of hungary and this is something we talked about on the last show the guy is giving um people bonuses for their population is decreasing as is happening in europe so he's now giving people like if you have three kids you get a you get a free van from the government and women that have like more than three or four children are exempted from income tax for life. Okay. So not just, you know, not just, you know, I mean, not just like taking your kids off your taxes. It's like you get this little reward. And he came flat out and said, we want Hungarian babies. We don't want people to come to our country, to come to our country and become part of our country and contribute and be part of it. And so that's just very, I mean, that, that's racist and it's not, and it's nationalism. And I think um, there was a law passed in the state of Israel last year that says, you know, Israel is a state for the Jews. And the whole principle of that is that you're, that we're stuck, that how we're born, that who we are, that how we're born is supposed to d determine our lives, that we don't have, that we don't have, Free ch that we don't have free choice, that we don't have have in, have independence. You know, I mean, if I'm born in the U.S., I'm a U.S. I'm a U.S. citizen. If I move to Spain and become a Spanish, a citizen of Spain, and I have a kid, that kid's a Spanish sit a Spanish citizen, and. Um, but here they're saying, you know, and it's one of the reasons I don't consider, that's one of the reasons I do not, cons that's one of the reasons I, I don't consider myself, I consider myself of Jewish descent. I don't consider myself, myself Jewish because it's not, um, I don't want those rules. I don't want those law. I don't want those, those commandments. I don't want, I don't want that life that's not what that's not what I chose and that is and that is my right um but there's something called the right of return I can go to the state of Israel and become a citizen like that like that with nothing because I'm a Jewish of Jewish descent and people of 
other nationalities cannot cannot do that. So, I mean, I'm now really seeing the state of Israel as the height of nationalism, and that is that is wrong. I mean, people should be able to move there equally and have equal rights. They become a citizen. So, okay. Um, and a slight jump because I'm going to jump over to a book I read because, oh, see, you haven't, Roselle, you haven't met Brenda. Brenda. Brenda, Craw Brenda Crawford, my friend. So I just finished reading a book about, Paul, about Polly Murray, who was born in 1910 and died Polly in Murray. 1985. Just an amazing um, African African American lesbian, and the book was in the sort of the structure of it was her friendship with Ellen with Eleanor Roosevelt. And man, she was Paul, and they first connected when Franklin when Franklin Roosevelt went to speak at the University of um, South Carolina, which was segregated, which was no the University of North Carolina, which was segregated, but South Carolina was 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 too, and um, Polly Murray wrote to him. Critic wrote to him criticizing that, and you know that okay that you know and her thing was you know she said she's an American citizen and she should is entitled to those rights and one of the things that's just remarkable to me about the civil rights movement is that you know people in the twentieth century they were bringing it back to the Declaration and the Constitution. I mean, which is just amazing to me, and it makes me respect the, con the Constitution more, and that the issue was um, Plessy, Plessy versus Ferguson, which was a law that was passed in, 18, in 1894, which set up segregation by saying se separate but equal. So what people were trying to do legally during the 20th century was overturn Plessy versus Ferguson. And people really, it makes, you know, I mean, it's so, you know, people like Thurgood Marshall and Polly Murray, they believed in the Constitution and they believed in the United States. And that's just amazing, amazing to me. And so... <clears throat> Um, I had been reading about Thurgood, about Thurgood Marshall, and so it was very cool to read about Polly about Polly Murray. Um, they were friends. They were, and um, Thurgood Marshall admired her, and she went to law school at Howard at Howard University, and. Um, before that, like, oh my God! I mean, she got a. Bunch of, a bunch of degrees. Oh, okay. Polly Murray was Deputy Attorney General of the state of California in the 1940s. Like, we need to know. We need to know all this shit. And <clears throat> um, what happened with Brown v. Board of um, Education? As many people know, I mean, this was a legal case that was built for years and he needed to keep doing these lawsuits and building on it and so Polly Murray wanted to go to the University of North of North Car of North Carolina and she wanted Thurgood Marshall to take her case and he really liked her but he did not do it because they because um she was gay and she had been in some mental in some mental institutions and there was the danger of that being used against against her against their case and so it's an example to me of how so they didn't do it of how really great people like Thurgood Marshall and like Polly Murray um, make difficult decisions 
and sacrifice and don't just go do whatever they want it whatever they want to do in the in the in the moment they think about they think about a bigger picture so it was just incredible to me and so and in later years um Thurgood Marshall um he recommended Polly Murray for for jobs and he actually there was um she was friendly with uh, friends with Maida Springer who was an African American um, lead woman leader in the trade unionist, and she was one of the people that really got on the case of the organizers of the March on Washington for not having any women speak, mm -hmm. and that's just one of the real failures of the March on Washington. And so one of the things I realized there were people that didn't want to speak up about that because the main organizer, the main leader was um, A. Philip Randolph. And so I guess for people back then, A. Philip Randolph was the way Martin Luther King is for us now. Mm -hmm. He was it. People were not gonna go, go, up, go up against, against him. Um, so, um, you know, no women were included to go meet with um with the president and um Dorothy Height may have been oh god I'm embarrassed I get that, I get, I get that I get that mixed up, mixed up and one of the concessions so they granted the concession of allowing the wives of the people of the guys that were speaking to follow them up to the platform they're like oh fuck that you guys like Wow, I mean, that is the, but um, that's the sort of stuff they were dealing they were dealing with. But, however, back to Thurgood Marshall, there were women that worked in his office. Um, he was actually fairly um, for that era. He was um, fairly um, fairly progressive um, about about women, but. <clears throat> Um, okay, so, um, Polly Murray was one of the people that was leading, um, sit-ins in the night, in the 1940s, you know, because we know a whole lot of that was happening, um, before, Ro before Rosa Parks, and she went to Ghana and taught law in Ghana. Okay, so, here's something, uh, um, Thurgood Marshall assisted um, Kwame Nkrumah, who was the first president of the country of independent Ghana, in writing the constitution for Ghana. And he said that in order to do this, I mean, he read he read constitutions, you know, he read you know, stuff from all over the world and that he believed that the United States Constitution was the best. And that's just amazing to, amazing to me and inspiring um, to look at people, again, like Thurgood Marshall and like Polly Murray that just underwent um, segregation and all of that. And so... It just makes me think about now and how we can try and get along with each other and that, um, you know, we need to look at laws. We need to look at the Constitution. We need, to, and, um, you know, when we're talking, when we're talking about, um, and I believe that that is what we need to do politically with the oppose, with whoever opposes us we need to realize that the law is for is for both of us um um and oh man, this is um and that's just what what we do um so okay so um and okay so that was that that was that era and Paul and Polly Polly Murray. So she taught in 
Ghana, and then um, she even like worked in a corp in a corporate loft. She went and, I mean, years, she tried to go, after getting her law degree from Howard, she tried to get a doctorate of judicial science in at Harvard and wasn't accepted there. So she went to Berkeley and while she, to Bolt, and while she was a student there, um, the NAACP asked her to do a project, like basically look at every, all segregation laws in the entire country and write something and write something up about it. So, you know, I mean, she was a scholar. She was an act. She was an activist. I mean, just an amazing amazing person and wow so I don't know I mean I just try and and then um, her friendship with Eleanor Roosevelt was very was um, very real it was Eleanor Roosevelt that called her a fire a firebrand but Eleanor Roosevelt liked liked that about about her and so they spent time they spent time together and Polly Murray would always she would bring she was very close with her aunts and so she would bring her aunts to visit Eleanor to visit Eleanor Roosevelt and you know I mean it was pretty it was pretty amazing and you know I mean fucking Eleanor Roosevelt should go she needs to be like on the on the dollar on the dollar bills i mean <clears throat> you know um she needs to be much more much more known about but okay so the jump to me for okay you know you look at people like polly murray and um you know thurgood marshall and other people and then okay so um then you look at okay so this is my radio show so i get to be i get to be everybody gets to know like how much i dislike burned dog and bito okay oh she man. hates bernie i hate him and but why she do what she hate him because simple hey great because he's never had to do anything he's never he's never done anything he just gets up there and rants about how bad things are and he's never done anything about it simple i don't True. like people i don't like people he, like I mean, that he tries I no he know. doesn't his he does not dude he did not try shit he has named that he did not he never did anything in the country before 2016 his name is not on he did not try and pass legislation like no man i i mean i know who does stuff and who d and who doesn't mm -hmm. and he didn't okay so you'd rather have trump instead of uh bernie if it came right now that you made the choice would you have kept trump and, and over bernie well no but um no i would no i w i wouldn't but i'd sure but i would sure be pissed and i don't like bito i i <laughs> either because he's an he's another one you know i mean i can't even like shit man look how long like you know again i mean brenda is another person who really inspired inspired me i'm 51 years old i've been wanting i've been waiting for a woman president since i knew what a president was and you know they're just tip, they're just typical you know i mean Beto, Beto never did shit either. You know, it's like okay, you can sit around on your ass in con in Congress for three for three terms, and then you can run for and see. Okay, and it's like only a white dude, and only a, only a rich white a rich white dude. Somebody like Obama. I mean, this sort is like somebody like Obama, somebody like like Kamala, like Kamala Harris. They were on it 
their entire lives. They went to college. They went to law, to law school. People like them do not get to drop out and play in bands and then get and then get back get back up there. And um, people like that, you don't get to like sit around like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go on a road trip and decide if I'm and decide if I want to be president. That's just bull. That's just bullshit. And even okay, like. People, um, I mean, Bill Clinton was from a working, a working class family. I mean, he didn't have it. He didn't have an easy, an easy life early. The same thing, you know, I mean, he just got on it right away. I mean, people that run, if Burn Dog really wanted to be president, if he really had any balls, he would have done it in 08. He would have run. He would have run and uh, run in 08. But he would have been chicken shit to go up against to against Ob to go up against Obama. He could have run in 04. So you know, if you're and so it's just because. See, for me, I mean, I don't. I know people like that. You know, I mean, they're just. He's just Bernie. He's just like the same old grumpy ass fucks that like get up there and that have never done anything themselves and just talk about how wrong everybody else is doing everybody else is doing things and Bido is just an entitled little prick and he looks like Bobby Kennedy and I don't like Bobby Kennedy we're like me and my brother were talking about LBJ would be rolling in his grave oh but okay Bido lost it's like offended it's just it's scary it's scary to me it's di it's dividing it's dividing people and um you know it's i i think that it is a i think it's people that can afford to be i think it's people being being drama queens it's like okay so the issue you saw all that right road the thing it's like okay People with people with money donate to organiz you know people with money have power and they donate to organizations to enact what they want and they do it for anything okay they do it they do it for the environment and people you know and people do people do that for Israel and because because they care about it you know it's like fucking own it and I'm still I um I do not. Have. I was like, okay, well, if it's, is it anti, you know, people think it's anti-Semitic to say, like, Jews have loyalty, it's anti-Semitic to say Jews have allegiance, well, what the fuck are they supposed to say, right. okay, attachment, whatever, you know, if I had, if I cared about the state of Israel, I would say so, and people could think what the fuck they want, they want about that, I did used to care about the state of Israel, you know, when I was young, I did, and that's how, because that's, that's how I was, I was raised. And, you know, I did, and now I don't. And I'll fucking say that. So, okay, um, we're going to take a break and play some other music than what we were playing. And we <laughs> will be back. 